the title for uh, what I wanted to talk about today is called Calling Out the Symbol Rulers. Uh, and I realize that not everybody has uh, much background or information about general semantics. So I wanted to say a few words about uh, general semantics and then talk a little bit more specifically about the, uh, the topic, the title. Um, the quick and dirty definition that we give when people say, well, what is general semantics? Or, or what does it deal with? What is it about? Uh, typically, we say something like, well, it concerns the study of language and behavior from the standpoint of how our language affects the way that we think and feel and behave. So it's kind of a hybrid of, of, of a language arts kind of a class and a psychology behavioral science kind of a class. Uh, but it gets into some other things beyond that. Um, and the degree to which uh, people through the years uh, since the 30s have uh, become interested in general semantics and used it, not only in their studies, not only uh, as a way to get three hours of credit for a required course to graduate or uh, uh, in, in a continuing education environment, but how they actually used it and applied it in their lives, either as a student, as a teacher, or, or whatever their profession. Um, this has made a big impact on some people's lives. And to illustrate the degree to which this is the case, uh, we're in the process of putting together a capital campaign brochure. We're getting ready to, to, to raise some money for the Institute. And so I've contacted various people who have been associated with general semantics in the past to ask them for some, um, for lack of a better word, testimonial about why it is that they've been a part of the, the, the organization for so long, why they've studied it, why they've attended seminars, why they've given money to support the organization. And one of the people that I heard from is Dr. Charles Russell, who is a retired management consultant and professor at the University of Toledo uh, in Ohio, who, who taught general semantics and served as an academic uh, advisor in their communications department. And he wrote back and he said, uh, he said, I've enjoyed introducing general semantics to hundreds of students who frequently ask, why have I just now learned the most important thing in my life? And this sentiment that people who have come across general semantics, whether they've been an undergraduate, whether they've been in a graduate class, uh, whether they've been an adult who read a book and got interested and came to a seminar, this is not an unusual sentiment that people have expressed. Um, and so how is it, what is it about general semantics that could be worthy of such a label, label as being either, either significant or even to the degree of being labeled as, as the most significant thing that they've ever learned in their lives? One aspect of this, I think, has to do with a statement uh, that comes from the Spanish philosopher and educator uh, Jose Ortega y Gasset, who wrote uh, a lot of books back in the early, in the early 1900s, or mid-1900s. Uh, and in 1930, he published a collection, a collection of essays uh, that uh, he had given there at the, in, in um, Madrid that was under the title of The Mission of the University. And in that book, he states that one of the primary goals or purposes or missions of the university is to train people or to teach people to enable them to live at the height of the times, quote, height of the times. And I'm not really sure what he meant by that, but I think it has a relevance in what I'm talking about today in terms of general semantics, because I would think that that ought to be a pretty good goal or a pretty good objective for, for any class that you take at a, at a university level, at a high school level, or whatever, that in some way it ought to be preparing you to live at the height of the times. And one way that general semantics approaches this is to try to help people become more aware and practice an ongoing sense of being able to discriminate what's going on in their life from their actual experiences from how they talk about it and being able to, to go through this the symbolizing process that we do where we, where we perceive things through our senses, and then through those perceptions, we go through some kind of cognitive integration process where we become, we become aware uh, of things and, and we evaluate our experiences and our perceptions, and then we derive some kind of meaning or some kind of significance that results in behavior or talking or a uh, particular type of attitude. So this process of, of perceiving our experiences and then integrating those with our past experiences, being present to the here and the now, gets to the point where we are, uh, are, are producing meanings or reactions to things. And some of those reactions can be consistent and appropriate and congruent with our experiences. But then we also have the capability 
to have uh, reactions and responses which are not necessarily in keeping with what's actually going on. So there's like appropriate behavior that can happen with respect to a particular event or experience, and then there's inappropriate. And of course, what we're talking about in general semantics is to try to help people learn to, to know themselves, to be uh, aware of their experiences and the way that they're, re they're responding to their situation such that they can respond appropriately in these given situations such that they have a greater possibility of living at the height of the times. And this notion of the process of going from perception to um, meaning or perception to behavior or perception to attitudes yeah, it's kind of bookended, I think, by a couple of quotes that I'd like to give you. Um, the first is by Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, who said, all our knowledge has its origins in our perceptions. Okay, so all the knowledge that we have, we gain in some way through our five senses, through our abilities to perceive what's going on around us. And then Charles Sanders Peirce, uh, the American uh, pragmatist philosopher from the late 1800s, early 1900s, stated that we don't get meaning, we respond with meaning. So when we talk about what do things mean, or where does meaning come from, to a large degree we're kind of taught that, that meaning is out there and that somebody can do something and, and, and send us meaning. But we know now through the latest in, in neuroscience and, and uh, 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 what we know about cognition that we generate meanings. We generate the significance of things that happen that we perceive, that we experience.